Today I test the Uhuhu alcohol based markers, share my experiences and my best practices and tips for working with them. I have been thinking about getting a few markers for a long time. But since one Copic marker costs a good 5 euros, I was just too cheap and put my idea on the back burner. But when Uhuhu asked me if I was interested in a collaboration, I of course immediately said yes. I've always wanted to know whether alcohol markers suit my mixed media technique and whether they offer an advantage over watercolor paints. Especially with very intense or dark motifs, watercolor paint is not optimal because it never dries particularly dark or intense. So I was all the more excited and thrilled to start this experiment. Uhuhu sent me 216 markers, plus 48 pastel shades. And when this gigantic amount of markers was unpacked, I was so excited. And that's why I want to thank them for making this video possible in the first place and for being so kind as to offer everyone a 10% discount with the code LEOBA10. It's valid for the next three months and you can use it on their website and Amazon shops. Just search Uhuhu markers on Amazon to find them or follow the links in my video description. The Uhuhu markers are much cheaper than, for example, Copic markers. In the large set, each marker only costs about 60 cents, which is of course a huge advantage compared to the Copic markers, which, as I mentioned before, cost about 5 euros per marker. Also, the Uhuhu markers come with a brush tip and a chisel tip. The pen caps can be stacked on top of each other and have little nibs that protect them from rolling away. I also like the large selection of pastel, bold and dark color hues. I've never worked with markers before and was therefore skeptical at first as to whether I would be able to get along with them at all. And after testing some colors a bit unorganized and trying to paint a page of my new coloring book, by the way, you can find my new digital coloring book on my website, I realized pretty quickly that this is not the way to go. While the colors on the caps correspond to the actual colors of the markers, some do look different, so I needed a full list of all the colors before embarking on my big project. Therefore, I first sorted all 265 markers by color group. Green, pink, beige, brown and so on. And then wrote down each individual color. It took me about two hours, but it was absolutely worth it. It's essential to me to be able to work properly and professionally with each medium I use. And that is also my most important tip for you. You need a well-organized color card to be able to find the colors you need quickly. Otherwise, you will be entirely lost. Which brings me to the next tip. Plan what colors you will use for each area of your painting. I chose a brightly colored subject because I believe markers are great for that. My model has a dark skin, pink and orange flowers and green leaves in her hair. All of these are strong and intense colors. But to get all these colors out at once would have overwhelmed me completely. So at first I only picked out the colors for the skin area. With my color card and my sorting system at hand, I found the colors I needed very quickly. So I was ready to go. Uhuhu also sent me a sketchbook with marker paper, but after playing around with the pens a bit, I quickly realized that I needed a much larger format, which is my third tip for you. Paint much larger than you would usually do. The brush tip of the markers is relatively fine, but even on the marker paper itself, the ink always blurs a bit at the edges, which makes it impossible to work precisely with my technique. For realistic painting, I need to be able to draw very thin lines, so I was left with only one option, to paint my subject larger, so that I have much more room for detail and precision. Fortunately, I was actually able to use my Clairefontaine watercolor paper for this. The colors behaved almost the same way, at least at first I thought, on this paper as they did on the Uhuhu marker pad. So I chose a relatively large format for my portrait and started to color in all the skin areas. I realized very quickly that unlike on the marker paper, the application on the watercolor paper was unfortunately a little more streaky. But I decided to ignore this. My technique requires so many layers and a little imperfection here and there doesn't intimidate me. So I just kept coloring. After I applied the first colors, I was so excited for the layering technique. How does the ink behave when I put them on top of each other and will it blend or not? 
And as you can see here, the colors overlap in a transparent manner and create somewhat clear edges, which of course is not necessarily desirable for a face that needs soft transitions. But that's no problem for me neither, because as a watercolor specialist, I know what to do if you can't paint transitions. You paint the shadows in a simplified way and just keep layering the colors on top of each other to build up the shape and form of your subject. And as you can see, I just leave the individual layers as they are and I don't care if there is a strong contrast between them. By the way, the green I apply here brings me to my next tip. Layer different colors. You can superimpose colors to create wonderful effects. My model from my reference has a green undertone on her skin. So just like I would do with watercolors, I put a layer of green over the brown skin. Do you see how beautiful and natural this looks? As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is my first time working with markers. So I'm sure I made some rookie mistakes. Here for example, the lighter color that I applied to the darker skin somehow damaged the paper and I thought I ruined my painting for good. The surface had become strangely grainy. My best guess is that there was just a bit too much ink for the watercolor paper as it's not made for alcohol markers. But I just kept going, let the paint dry and then simply painted over it with darker tones until the grain was covered, so it didn't bother me anymore. From the beginning, I had planned to integrate the markers into my mixed media process. I didn't assume I could paint every part of my painting with them. I can't do that with watercolors either. So I continued to work with color pencils to finish the face, create transitions and edit details. By the way, if you want to see the full process of how I did that and which techniques I used, join me on Patreon, where you can find the full video. As my student, you have also access to all my other videos and tutorials. You can find a link to my Patreon in the video description. After I finished the face, I was a lot more confident with using the markers and I even colored the hands with the big chisel tip. I really enjoyed putting the colors on top of each other without paying attention to transitions or drying times. This was a really freeing experience to me and very enjoyable. I especially like the effect of the green marker here. I added some highlights and hatchings with color pencils after so that the lower part of the figure also matches the face. After I had finished the whole skin area, I put all the pens back to their dedicated places again. Which brings me to my next tip. Always put your pens back when you no longer need them. Not only would all the brown tones confuse me when I'm looking for a purple tone for the flowers for example, it's also more complicated to sort all the markers back into the bags when they are all scattered around on the table. That's why I made sure to only pick up new tones after I had completed a specific part of my painting. Here I used the same technique again with the color chart. I held it next to my reference and picked the purple and pink tones that seemed the closest to the reference. Also I keep a test paper next to my artwork at all times to double check the colors before using them, as I confused them all of the time. That's another tip I'd like to share with you. Use a test paper to make sure you choose the colors you want, so you don't accidentally pick the wrong one. I had a lot of fun trying out all the bright colors and layering them. One thing I was wondering before starting this experiment was if I would be faster with markers than with watercolors. While there are no drying times, selecting the right markers also takes time. But I still think I was a tad faster, especially with the flowers. I had to put many layers on top of each other and with watercolors I would have to blow dry each of them. However, watercolor flowers always look particularly beautiful. So it's hard for me to decide which medium I would have preferred for the different parts of the painting, but I definitely find working with both mediums very satisfying. I painted the hair after I finished the flowers. I painted the dense strands of hair with a thick chisel tip and this was so much fun. My last tip for you is take your time and be patient. Because it's so easy to work with markers, one tends to work a bit more quicker and a bit careless. But if you want to create a really beautiful work of art, you have to work patiently, even with markers. For example, the small shadows in the dress area don't look like much, but they took me quite some time to complete, because they used two different shades of green and three different shades of pink. The result is very nice and I'm glad I took the time and didn't rush it. 
The effort was well worth it, as I was able to sell my artwork to a collector on the same day I debuted this artwork on Facebook. So always remember, good quality takes time. Finally, I filled in the background. However, I didn't want the background to just be boringly monochromatic. I wanted to add some abstractions to it. So I painted it with watercolor and gouache and added some paint splashes as well. On my watercolor paper, the markers didn't came out quite as dark as I expected. So I repainted some parts of the hair with black gouache paint, which then achieved the missing contrast and brought the painting together. I am so happy with this artwork and I think she turned out so beautiful. I named her Marie Curico, inspired by Polynesian mythology. My conclusion is that I can recommend the Uhuru markers to everyone who wants to try something new and loves bright, intense colors in their art. They also convinced me in terms of their intensity and application. Personally, I couldn't tell any difference between the two Copic markers I own and the Uhuru markers. Now, like many intensive colors, such as for example pink watercolor, alcohol markers are not light fast and your artwork should not be exposed to direct sunlight. I recommend protecting the finished artwork under UV glass and not hanging it in a sunny place. However, this should generally not be done with any artworks, as all pigments can change over time. This doesn't keep me from making art with these intense colors though, but since I keep getting comments about it, I thought I'd mention it at one point. Looking back on my art over the years, I realized that whenever I incorporated new materials and really tried to make them work, I could connect techniques and discover new methods that ultimately improved my art in innovative ways and made it stand out from other art that would only include one medium. So if you want to get better, trying out different mediums such as markers is a great way to do it. You will get a feeling for how color behaves and how different mediums can add to your personal style. I find mixed media art so exciting because it enables us artists to create a wide variety of textures and effects and gives our art a unique style that can only be achieved through the interactions of the various media used. Another advantage of markers is that you don't have the unpredictability you have with watercolors, for example. Everyone who finds it difficult to paint with watercolors and whose color bleeds together and just doesn't do what they want will find markers easier to work with. In this experiment, I proved that I could actually swap my watercolor process with markers and then continue refining my painting with colored pencils as I usually do. A huge thanks to the sponsor Uhuhu again who made this video possible in the first place. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed working with these markers and I hope you found it helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have worked with them before and how you like them. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and I see you in the next video. Bye bye!